Hello, seniors. I'm glad that you are able to view this instructional video in that probes you are interested to learn research. May this video provide you with memorable learning as you go through practical research when. Happy learning! Our lesson today is Characteristics, Strengths and Weaknesses, Kinds and Importance of Qualitative Research. At the end of this module, you should be able to describe characteristics, strengths, weaknesses, and kinds of qualitative research and illustrate the importance of qualitative research across fields. You probably hear a claim that the opposite of number is word. This perhaps can help you easily differentiate quantitative and qualitative types of research. It is said that number best represents quantitative research, while word best represents qualitative research. However, as a student researcher, you should consider that these concepts do not confine alone with just simply remembering keywords such as number for quantitative research and word for qualitative research. Now, you may be wondering and may ask, what makes a study a quantitative or a qualitative research? Are there several considerations that I should know regarding researches? Should I explore more on familiarizing them as two distinct types of research? Since you are now taking Practical Research 1 course, this further deals on a qualitative type of research. Again, qualitative. You must be equipped first with full understanding of essential concepts that describe qualitative research before conducting such type of investigation. Hence, in this lesson, you will explore qualitative research by recognizing its characteristics, strengths and weaknesses, kinds and importance across different fields. Remember that having an in-depth understanding of these concepts will make your qualitative research journey be guided and later be successful. To help you better understand qualitative research as a separate discipline, the following should be explored. Characteristics, weaknesses, kinds, strengths, and importance. Qualitative research can be easily characterized by carefully observing how some research elements such as research design, data collection procedure, and data analysis have been put into considerations. As cited from Spalding University Library 2020, these three key elements will guide the researcher to properly conduct a qualitative research study. To further understand this kind of research, its characteristics are presented as follows. First, qualitative research is naturalistic. A study to be conducted by the researcher should be based on real-life situations. Likewise, the researcher should also unfold the study in a natural manner. That is, the findings are derived from the analysis of authentic data gathered from the participants. Such a concept makes qualitative research known for its non-controlling characteristic. Number two, qualitative research is purposeful. In conducting a qualitative type of study, the researcher should select the participants in a purposive manner, that is, they will be selected because they either have easy access to the information needed or simply have the knowledge to provide a great deal of information needed to the study. Hence, these participants are called information-rich in the context of research. This type of participant selection will validate the concept that qualitative study focuses on rich insights regarding the phenomenon rather than on mere numerical data simply obtained from surveys and questionnaires. Third, qualitative research is detailed. A thick description of gathered data from the participants makes this type of study a detailed one. It is important that the researcher should capture the direct quotations of the responses of the participants from the conducted interview or observation. 
Number four, qualitative research requires engagement and neutrality. Direct contact with the people, situation, and phenomenon under investigation should be established by the researcher. Immersing oneself would enable the researcher to acquire personal experiences and insights which are essential to better understand the phenomenon. Further, the researcher should also be neutral in the responses and observations he or she may get while engaging with the participants. The researcher should likewise show openness, sensitivity, and respect. Fifth, qualitative research follows an inductive procedure. As the researcher immerses himself or herself in the phenomenon under investigation, specific details and data will be gathered from the target participants. This data that can be used to discover emerging patterns and themes. Following an inductive procedure, the researcher will start from exploring the phenomenon and will end to confirming findings of the works. Sixth, Qualitative research is viewed in a holistic perspective. A study in a qualitative type cannot be simply done in a linear and cause-and-effect relationship approach. Rather, it requires the researcher to view the whole phenomenon under investigation in a complex system. That is, different variables can either cause or affect the phenomenon. It is known that a qualitative type of research focuses more on explaining why subjects under investigation think and behave in certain ways. With such purpose, it can be observed that there are corresponding strengths and weaknesses a qualitative research may have once it is employed by the researcher. As cited from University of Denmark Library 2020, this type of research has its strengths and weaknesses presented as follows. Let's proceed to the strengths of qualitative research. Number one, qualitative research complements quantitative data. Interview and observation are the common instruments used in the conduct of a qualitative study. Such instruments can provide qualitative data that can be utilized as a support for any quantitative data appearing in a study. Hence, a more reliable result will be ensured. Number two, qualitative research provides more detailed information to explain complex issues. Since this type of research study requires the researcher to immerse himself or herself in the phenomenon under investigation, direct experiences can be acquired. Similarly, considering information-rich participants, as well as utilizing interview and observation as qualitative research instruments, may enable the researcher to gather more accurate data needed in explaining a complex phenomenon. Three. Qualitative research is cost-efficient. A small number of participants is usually considered in qualitative research. Hence, less resources will be needed to accomplish the study. Likewise, interview schedule and observation checklists as qualitative research tools demand the researcher to spend less resources unlike questionnaires as a primary tool utilized in quantitative research. This time, let's have the weaknesses of qualitative research. Number one, qualitative research cannot generalize the findings to the study population. The use of a small number of participants in qualitative research may result in limited responses. Thus, findings of the study might not be possibly generalized to a larger population. Replication of the study is often suggested. Second, qualitative research is more difficult to analyze. Unlike quantitative research which deals with numeric data and can be interpreted through a statistical formula, qualitative research presents non-numeric data which are all based on the subjective responses of their participants or respondents. 
if data are not critically analyzed and carefully interpreted, results may become biased and even less credible. Third, qualitative research is time-consuming. Though qualitative research utilizes a small number of participants, this, however, demands the researcher to spend more time in dealing and engaging with them. Similarly, the analysis and interpretation phase of the study also requires the researcher to take more time in observing the emerging patterns and themes derived from participants' provided data. The next slides will present to you the kinds of qualitative research. In conducting a qualitative type of research in different fields such as business, education, medicine, etc., there are six widely used qualitative research kinds, namely, the first kind of qualitative research is phenomenological. This kind of qualitative research focuses on subjective lived experiences of the participants in order to understand phenomenon. Here, the researcher is concerned with the feelings of the participants regarding a particular event or activity. Hence, the uniqueness of their lived situations can be described. Interview is the common instrument used for its data collection with the suggested sample size ranging from 5 to 25. Examples A researcher aims to determine the challenges and coping mechanisms of senior high school working students in the second district of Bataan. Another example a researcher aims to explain the lived experiences of the COVID-19 survivors in the province of Bataan. Second type is ethnographic. It is a kind of qualitative research which concentrates on the study of a group of people in a particular environment to characterize behaviors, cultures, challenges, and possible occurring themes the researcher is required to engage himself or herself with the participants through immersion in an extended period of time. Observation, along with the use of interview and survey, is an essential instrument for this type of study. Its examples are A researcher seeks to determine the cultural practices and healthcare beliefs of the ethnic group living in Bataan province. A researcher seeks to characterize the survival strategies of families in an urban poor community. Next is grounded theory. This kind of qualitative research intends to explain a phenomenon through developing a theory. In comparison with phenomenological study that primarily describes lived experiences, grounded theory aims to provide explanation and theory behind those lived experiences. Interview and supporting documents are the commonly used data collection instrument for its participants, approximately ranging from 20 to 30 or until data achieve saturation. Examples are a researcher attempts to conceptualize the breast cancer survivorship process among Batangueños. A researcher attempts to generate a theory of defense mechanisms of students who experience school bullying. Fourth, case study. It is a qualitative research kind which allows the researcher to have an intensive analysis of the phenomenon. The aim of this study is to accurately describe the case through an in-depth examination of a single person or single institution. With this, thorough interview, observation, and documentation are all utilized as multiple data collection instruments. Examples are, a researcher aims to explain the causes of the reading difficulty of a grade 5 struggling reader. A researcher aims to describe the language challenges of hearing impaired students in a SPED class.
Historical qualitative research is concerned with the identification, evaluation, and synthesis of past event data. Further, it aims to understand present patterns and to anticipate future choices through clearly relating the past event data, which are obtained from sources such as documents, relics, and artifacts, and oral reports. Examples a researcher attempts to explore the nature and context of the political leadership of Pampanga governors. A researcher seeks to explore the development in the courtship letter writing style among Lipenos. The sixth type is narrative. Life accounts of individuals based on their personal experiences are typically obtained and analyzed in the conduct of this kind of qualitative research. The primary objective of the study is to extract meaningful context based on the documented experiences. Unlike phenomenological research which focuses on describing and explaining a phenomenon through the lived experiences of the participants, Narrative research focuses merely on the nature of the story told by the participants. Hence, phenomenological research may use narrative, but narrative research does not necessarily need phenomenological. Discourse analysis is one of the commonly and widely employed approaches of narrative research. Here are the examples. A researcher seeks to characterize the struggles faced by student athletes, and a researcher seeks to describe the daily teaching experiences of millennial teachers in the school's division of the Nawan City. Importance of qualitative research. Qualitative research is known for providing meaning to understand an existing phenomenon. With this, the perspectives, expressions, and activities of the participants play a vital role to unveiling the local context across different fields. The development in any field, such as in education, business, medical, and health allied services, and etc., is made possible by means of qualitative research. For example, the researcher may study the experiences of individuals and their access to health care by determining their perspectives. This solicited responses reflecting their experiences, attitudes, and circumstances may help the researcher to understand the phenomenon. Hence, suggestions for improvement and development can be sought. Now that you have already explored qualitative research through its characteristics, strengths, weaknesses, kinds, and importance, it is no doubt that you have already acquired important details needed for pursuing the conduct of such study leading to a successful result. That's the end of our lesson today. It's been my pleasure teaching you one of the amazing topics of Practical Research 1, and I really hope you learned something from this video lesson. Thank you, and may God bless us all. Let's meet again in our next video.